Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Atom RPG with me, Bring It On. We're gonna explore Krasno, the Krasno suburbs, and speak to the NPCs here. Actually, let's start with Fidel. Ask a few questions. Oh, what do you think about Krasno? This town is more dangerous than it looks, Donnie, and it looks very dangerous. The big fish here could swallow us whole without even biting down. Wow, can I ask more? What's the general attitude towards Adam here? Most ordinary citizens don't even believe in the organization's existence. Those who do believe in some ridiculous legends. We're not threatened by that. The Chamber of Commerce is the authority in these parts, and they, on the other hand, might suspect something. Their attitude towards Adam is very tense, but that's understandable. Think about it. You're the main power in the region, like a king or god himself. But somewhere there's an organization with more weapons, resources, and manpower. And it's secret. It's clear they fear Adam. They might be right to do so. I see. Uh, how's development of the local community going? We muddled through. Before, when there was still public voting and less bureaucracy, one could openly promote an idea. The restoration of the TV tower. That was my project. Now, however, Fidel winces, displeased. Things have gotten complicated. A couple years ago, the Chamber of Commerce had a sort of nervous breakdown. They began to search for members of Adam everywhere. They were so paranoid they distanced themselves from ordinary citizens. One guy even got hanged. The sad irony is he wasn't or the sad irony is that he wasn't even one of ours. He just got unlucky. Well, that must have been a very intense situation for Fidel being here by himself. So we'll go around the outskirts first. We'll head to the center. Oh, okay. I think this is the way into Krasno um without having to pay. He's quite near the giant well going deep into the depths under Krasno. Having a rope might come in handy right about now. I listen to the sounds coming out of the well. The sounds of water, water droplets hitting stone and quiet squeaking is all you hear. A uh, Fidel, what is this place? Well, once people tried to build a vertical shaft here to dry the local swamp and make it into a veggie garden, but they quickly dug into some pre-existing tunnels. Uh, God knows why, they stopped digging right after that fact. You shake your head as you peer into the dark abyss. Uh, tie the rope. You tie the rope very hard and pull on it to make sure it will tolerate your weight. You quickly realize that you will know for this for certain, only after suspending yourself from it. Alright, we're not going to go down there yet. There's plenty to do in the suburbs. We have a few... a few quests. And I still want to go past that speech check with the guard. To prove that I can. To make Ma and Pa proud. Far, okay, not that far back. But still want to check out every corner. Just make sure I don't miss any stashes or something. Stashed away back there. Alright. Let's just go back this way. You do get an item later on that makes it a little easier to run around and explore regions. I think you get it in Bunker 317. Hot dog, we found a brick. Oh, there's stuff laying on top of the trash as well. Have I been missing stuff like that this whole time? Can I click on it? Or is it just discolored? That's why it... It's definitely... Well, I think it's just the color and it stands out. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna... <laughs> oh yeah, and these people. Alright, let's start with this guy. Are you for real? Where would I have this much money from? The guard waves his hand in con conciliation. 
Fine. 1,000 rubles might be overkill. Let's make it 500. That a copic less. Oh, I'll be back. 96 experience. Pretty good for passing, is it? Silly old speech check. Alright, since this guy's wandering around, I'm gonna talk to him real fast. So I don't lose track of him. 20 rubles. Wonder if I can match this. Um, this is gonna get out of hand. These things normally do. All right, fine. We'll do. I really want to hold on to the dice, though, in case I run across somebody who wants to play. All right, I lose one ruble this way. I think that's fine. As you approach the militia man, you notice some details that are pretty hard to see from far away. There's something queer in the man's body proportions. His hands look a little longer than normal. But his gait has too much spring in it. Even his pants are strange, since there's an extra fold of cloth sewn into them. When the man notices you. He asks you with a deep, yet un yet kind voice. Uh, what is the matter, little one? Got a kitten lost in a tree? Maybe your kite is stuck in the telephone wires. Just you tell Daddy Longlegs. He'll come around ASAP. Daddy Longlegs? Is that your, even your real name? Nah, that's a nickname the little ones gave me. Just like Uncle Giraffe and Comrade Telegraph Pole. The old people who took me in as an orphan named me Stepin Stepinovich Stepinov. But I don't like that name. Too long. We're both people of usual height. How come you call me little? The man looked surprised for a second, as if he only now realized he spoke too much. Oh, uh, sorry, you know? I love this city so much, I think of its people as if they were my kids. That's why I call you y'all little ones, because I care for you and love you. Oh, come on, buddy. We both know that's not the whole truth. Trust me. The man looks you over and nods. Fine, fine. You don't look like a person who would later make fun of me. You know how antennas on cars are made? You can make several meters long by pulling on it. They can collapse it into a tiny old thing. That's how Mother Nature decided to make my legs work. With help of radiation. Observe. The weird militiaman walks away from you, clears his throat, and starts growing. His legs start to extend, and do not tear his pants only because of the extra fold of cloth sewn into them. The man quickly reaches the height of three whole meters before the process stops. He then collapses his legs and shrinks to his usual size again. He comes back to you, looking a little bit embarrassed for the show he put on. The people here. They respect me for my height. When I go to work, everyone sees me a kilometer away. Getting boots is a problem though, with such huge feet. I also need to eat more than normal men. And when I sleep, my legs extend so there's no bed that could fit me. Still, I'm happy the way I am. La Critura. Uh, a monster in town. A mutanto. Don't swear at me, comrade tavern owner. Most people in the city know of my deformity. And they don't mind since I'm a good guy. My heart has no place for malice. I'm glad to hear that even an El Gumblino such as yourself can have a good spirit inside him. The only reason I yelled at you was that you scared me with that transformation. It will not happen again. Okay, now you know. Well, hot darn. That's an interesting transformation you got there. Ask away, little one. I'm glad to have a little chat. Now, what have you heard around the city? I heard that our enemies in Paragon like morals and common sense so much, they made a place for dogs to fight one another to the death. Why, those bastards? I throw them to the ring for the poor old doggies to chew on, and tear them apart. I should probably visit that place. Bye. Alright, so we met Daddy Longlegs. I feel like I've been called Daddy Longlegs at least once in my life. Because I hit 6'2 in high school. I'm still 6'2, I mean, it's not. haven't really grown since. Maybe a little outward since I can't really go to the gym right now. Alright, so the next best place to go is probably inside the... Alright, checked out right there. 
All right, let's go inside the power plant. There's a guard right here we can talk to as well. Hands on hips, a serious broad-shouldered militiaman walks, watches over the street from his fortified post near a decrepit pre-war power station. Spotting you nearby, law enforcement officer draws his eyebrows together and a frown inflexes his massive arms. Stop. This is a strategically important facility, and no place for a civilian to take a stroll. Did you forget something here? But what kind of facility is it? Why can't I go for a walk here? The man rolls his eyes. Are you blind? Do you need an eye exam? This is the city power plant, an object of great strategic importance, as vital as food and water. Yeah, the power plant sure is important. But one more question. God, what now? Have you heard any gossip or rumors? Or perhaps you know some local folklore? I don't know any folklore, but I did hear this. Some people from out of town are talking about a noble serial killer that's appeared in the north. His name is Hybris or Hubris, something like that. He killed a popular singer who became too full of himself, and then some pushy politician, and then a mobster who had lost all shame. People say, stay humble or Hybris will get you. Darn it. I even changed my mind about asking for promotion after hearing this story. Sounds like there's no joking around with this killer. One more question. <laughs> Now spit it out, what do you want? Why are you so angry? You look like you're ready to jump me. Open your eyes. I'm guarding an important government facility. All alone. There's no real checkpoint. No security guards. And the only weapon I have to scare off random tourists and hobos is rude language. So that's how it is. Alright, go on and be angry if that's what makes you happy. One more question. Hi, uh, nothing much. I'll be on my way. Good luck with your service. What a cheerful fellow. Which I guess is having the one guard outside of Krasno for the power station isn't the best idea. So if they were to get attacked, the power station would fall into enemy hands immediately. Alright, he's gonna give us a quest. Just make sure there's nothing in here to here it is. Go, 13 whole experience. A tired, sweaty man walks around the coal plant, a power plant with a disgruntled expression. He's looking over the machinery, sometimes the huge furnace, sometimes a large pile of coal, sometimes the different gauges and mechanisms poking out all over the place. When he notices you, he nods a greeting and wipes his forehead. Can you believe they expect me to work in these conditions? Everything is falling apart, and the coal supply is erratic at best. Problems with the coal shipments, buddy boy? What's wrong? Since the old mine out east was depleted, we've been getting our coal from the north through Paragon. I'm guessing you already know what kind of place uh, Paragon is. We don't get the shipments on time. Uh, Krasno suffers constant blackouts. Since I'm the head of this pl this here plant, everyone blames me. Well, that's a crap situation if I ever heard one. Want some help? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, maybe you could do something about our troubles. Someone needs to speak to the guy responsible for the coal shipments. He's somewhere in the Chamber of Commerce bunker. I do it myself, but I can't leave my post even for a minute. Okay, where can I find him? In the Chamber of Commerce bunker. Nobody can get inside the thing, uh, but you don't look like the type of guy who lets lock, lets lock doors stop him. The main need to talk to is Alexander Sablin. Or Sab Sablin. A deal. I'll tell him about your woes. That's what I want to hear. Tell Sablin he needs to do something about Paragon. You're my only hope now. Well, can you answer some of my questions now? So be it. What would you like to know? Uh, tell me about yourself, electrician. I came here from the north with the first wave of immigrants. Hate this climate, but I'm alive, so I guess it's not all bad. You got that right. Ugh, I see a real dynamo when it comes to asking questions. Or dynamo. Uh, tell me about your city. I rarely get the time to walk around Krasno, and really get the feel of it. But still I can say that it's a good place to live. There's some semblance of law. There are militiamen patrolling the streets and there's attractions for tourists and visitors. You can even visit a bookstore and a gambling hall. That's a lot of stuff. Sounds good. Uh, tell me about this here power plant. What's there to tell? It's your average pre-war coal plant. The old timers say it stood here even before the Great Revolution. But I never confirmed the real construction dates myself. I don't know much about architecture. Living history, huh? 
another question. Have you heard any rumors? I've heard there have been problems with the coal shipments from Paragon because of some ongoing feud back there. No matter what anyone does, the infighting persists. Now, if they'd accept the rule of the Chamber of Commerce, but nah, that would be even worse. Too much bureaucracy. There's no beast scarier than paperwork. Another question. Uh, the man entirely rubs his sweaty hands on his dirty pants. Maybe you'd care to answer some really important and interesting questions. Nope. Uh, let's see. Let's, yeah, listen, I wanted to talk to you about the coal shipments. Go ahead. Alright, never mind. I forgot. <laughs> that was my excuse. Shoot, what was the name of that book? There's a book where a guy, he's... Was it the castle? It's a book about bureaucracy. Basically, this guy's trying to go around and find out what he's on trial for. Maybe, no, maybe it's called the trial, not the castle. He keeps getting sent around, and everyone keeps um, telling him he has to go speak to someone else to find out what he what he's on trial for. Yeah, I want to say it's. I think it is called the trial. You see a strong, well-built man in his fifties. He staggers from side to side, hiccups and croaks. As he sees you, the drunk grin grins and opens his arms widely for an embrace. When he realizes you're not too keen for a hug, he calms down and announces with a smile. Ah, brother. Vodka and cigarettes have given me quite a hard time, but I'm still able to recognize Hiccup, a man who's come to help unsinkable Vyatsky, the navigator, to earn some dough for, it, for a nice bottle. I don't have money, but I have vodka. The man stares at the bottle with hungry eyes, but eventually he finds the strength to refuse your offering. Stop. Stop tempting me. What sort of an example would that be for newcomers? Newbies. If I, a veteran, a respectable Krasno uh, pensioner, live off pittance? No, never. I'm a man of business. I dance for my money. One dance is ten rubles. The drunk shifts his weight from one feet to another, one foot to another, claps his hands, waves his head, sways his hips, and makes scary faces. I see. But let's just talk. A conversation. Yuck. One pause decides of the unsinkable navigator. But we can chat, surely. Once we become friends, then. Hiccup. You'll pay me for my talent. Now, what do you want to know, matey? Now, how did you end up in Krasno? I did, didn't I? We headed for Moscow with the garrisons. But there was nothing but smoking craters there. Winter was coming. So we headed for the south. And there were thugs and psychos and marauders. No one minded cutting a soldier's throat to get his rifle and ration. So I moved deeper south, and it seemed quiet. People were trading. Some old guy built an entire village around an oak tree, and hiccup. This was a real city with a proper chamber of commerce. Would it all would it all appear in a bad place? Not a chance. So that's how I ended up here. I see. So you immigrated here. Another question. Listening. Now where's the best booze in town? Do you know the chemical formula of alcohol? If it's in the drink, the drink is fine by me. Uh, by the way, those who are too picky about booze and turn their nose up from methanol-based drinks weren't allowed into the army in the olden times. Just like the flat-footed. Bloody connoisseurs. My god. Hiccup. No surprise you drank your wits off. Another question. Uh, why do you call yourself the Navigator? I was with the motorized infantry, but I reckon the Navigator sounds more romantic. Like the sea, and all that crap. Hiccup. The sea has its romance, yeah. Another question. Are there any interesting rumors circulating? In Berlin, I used to serve together with a captain, an adventurer like you. A tough old SOB. Then gangsters hammered his knees into pieces. Now he too lives in the city. Bedridden. Who would have thought? Can I ask another question? Alright, here's 10 rubles. Dance for me. Ah, of course. No probs. The navigator snatches the bill out of your hand and starts uh, belching, whistling and staggering from side to side from one side to the other, bending alternatively his left and right legs, and slapping himself on the chest and belly without much rhythm. Hey hey, la la lay, go on balalaika, hiccup. Ah, so we dance, now it's time to go on. See you later, navigator. That was not worth it.
walk by a short, cute-looking girl who is currently mopping the floors of the tavern. As she senses you close to her, she loudly sneezes. Achu. Oh, sorry. I hope I didn't spit at you. What's up, Nastas- Nastasia? Still allergic to stuff? Maybe you want to rest a while. Oh, it's terrible, Fidel. I really try not to sneeze around customers, but rest won't do me good. It's an allergy, not a sickness. The girl covers her face and loudly sniffs. Kazuntite, uh, what's wrong? No worries. It's just my allergy, you see. Can't seem to get rid of it. Whenever some tree uh, blooms in this city, I start sneezing and wheezing. Tried a doctor? I did, but he could not help me. I assume if I had enough... Uh, is it the doctor skill or medicine skill? I don't remember. I could probably do something here. Um, I did, but he could not help me. It's too dry here, you see. When something blooms, there's nothing stopping the pollen from entering air. And um, when the herbs out, out in the field start blooming... Oh, achoo. I tend to lock myself in. That's how bad it becomes. Uh, you work here? Yes, me and Kostya both help out when we can. He has no parents, neither do I. So Fidel, the owner, gave us jobs. It's just that my allergy is so bad lately. Achoo. I'm so sorry. I barely keep up. Well, good luck. I need to take my leave. The girl who's suffering from allergies mops the floor and sniffs with her stuffed nose. When she sees you, she smiles, but then sneezes loudly and starts wiping her face. Wave to the girl and walk away. Um, let's see. Won't need these anymore. Well, I didn't need five anyway. Didn't realize I had that many. Definitely don't need that many of those. Oh, whoops. The young lad looks around the bar, uh, frowning. He casts a quick glance at you and nods. Yes? I'd like something to drink. Okay. Uh, do you have any special offer today? I'm not as skilled at mixing cocktails as Fidel, so I can offer you just one. A cocktail called Idiot. It's not to everyone's liking, but our regulars enjoy it. It'll cost you three rubles. Well, there you go. And hurry up. I'm dying of thirst. The young guy procures a heavy bottle filled with a cloudy, stinking liquid. This is local moonshine. You're hoping it's made of beetroot or potato at least, but its true ingredient is most likely, most likely sawdust, if not crap. Anything is possible. All these thoughts are running through your head. Vlad has already poured you a shot and is handing it to you. Drink it bravely. You drain the glass. At first, nothing happens. But then, you feel as if a river of lava has just gone through your body. Your whole being demands that you spit out the disgusting slush. It's only your strong will that allows you to hold in the deathly potion and stops you from embarrassing yourself by emptying your stomach's contents right in front of everybody. Ew, darn. What a sheep dip. I did warn you. By the way, that is the cocktail that the cocktail is not to everyone's liking. You should have listened to me and not risk it. Uh, don't rub it in. Uh, let's change the subject. The young lad shrugs. I can ask you a few questions. The young lad looks at you with a quizzical expression on his face. Uh, how's the work going? Do you get enough customers? Not too bad, I guess. People frequent this place. In Krasno suburb, our bar is the main place for entertainment. The cultural center, as they used to say. I see. Can I ask you something else? Well, okay, I guess. Uh, why don't you tell me about this lovely town? Uh, what's there to tell? This is the wasteland capital. I doubt there's a place in the whole world that would be more developed or cultured than our good old town. I highly recommend a visit to the TV tower and to see the building of the Chamber of Commerce. You can also go aboard the ship in the tavern, or in the haven. Ahem. I see. Can I ask you something else? Tell me about Fidel. Well, I was just a kid when I got here. Had it not been for the chief, I'd sure have kicked the bucket. I'd either have been knifed in some back street or sold into slavery. Cross my heart. Fidel raised me. He became like a father to me. No kidding. I see. I actually know a guy that looks almost exactly like this portrait. Actually, it's a little uncanny. I bet you've heard a lot of rumors. I've heard there's a new horrendous disease in the wasteland called Krasnov Syndrome. People tell all sorts of things about it. That it makes a man's eyes fall out, his body rot, and blood boil. 
These things are unpleasant to listen to. I'm really hoping it doesn't reach the town. We won't survive another big epidemic here. Hmm. Tell me another rumor. They say that Dan, who's in charge at the old factory, is laying his hands on surrounding lands with more zeal than ever before. Some say that life became safer with him as a leader. Others complain that these days, one is too scared to even spit on the ground. Because if the old spider Dan doesn't like it, that's it. You're done for. Another. Some travelers complain that when Hesperus star is shining particularly bright, they get awful migraines. That's strange. I'm not even sure I've ever seen it. Maybe it's just more visible in other lands? I don't really know. People who are not afraid to clear radioactive debris claim that radiation diminishes. That's good as most. Uh, wasteland. That's good as most wasteland dwellers are confident that it is going to remain f for like thousands of years. Another rumor. A town has plenty of eye candy chicks, but I'm drawn to the one who lives far away, Neltra Noye with her brother, Katya. She runs a local bar there, although they call it a tavern. She may be a blue stocking, but she's smart and full of light, and she's an expert on alcohol. Ah, if I had the courage in a couple of days off. Alright, that's enough rumors for now. Let's talk to this guy. You see a well-built, gray-haired man bending over maps. Compasses and rulers spread all over the desk. He's sunk deep in thought. He knocks his knuckles on the table. Oh wow, a real command post. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I see another study of the documents scattered in front of him. He cast a furtive glance at the table. There's a map of the wasteland covered in lines, notes, and scribbles. Several familiar names jump out at you including Ultranoia and Krasno. This is clearly a map of the local region. It looks like a military map. Adam used similar ones for battle planning. But you don't have time to think this through as the man looks up and makes eye contact. For a moment he looks irritated, but this quickly changes to a friendly, albeit slightly forced smile. He looks down at his maps again. It's not nice to spy. He straightens his broad shoulders and groans quietly as his neck makes a series of small pops. Phew, what can I do for you? Isn't that funny? I was going to ask you the same thing. Interesting. How can, he be use to, how can he be of use to me? You tell me and I'll do my best. Yeah, I think you're preparing a military operation. I have experience in that area. Yes, that's right. You're sharp. Where does this experience come from? Well, that's confidential. I trust you understand. Of course. I wasn't going to interrogate you. Don't worry. There are many ways to earn a living in the wasteland. Not all of them are what you would call decent. Morally speaking. Okay, do you think you can help me with something? If you're interested, I could deal you in. Of course. A certain influential individual has hired me to deal with the problem Ochenoye is now facing. Unfortunately, the people I need for the job are not returning my calls. Uh, who's your employer, if you don't mind my asking? Why would I mind? On the contrary, he asked me to spread the word. It's Dan from the factory, Denis Denisovich, who hired me. Perhaps you've heard of him. He's sort of in charge of the village, so I assume he doesn't want them to come to harm. But he's not sure his gang can deal with the threat. Now what, that, what threat is Ultranoye facing exactly? A big gang of slavers who've decided they want the village for their central base in the wasteland. If they succeed, it won't just be the villagers who suffer. It'll be all of us. I see. Go on. I need someone to gather the men I need together, and perhaps even participate in the forthcoming operation himself. It'll be one hell of a clash, trust me. Uh, who do you need? A professional team. Leod Miller the Sniper, a trooper known as Major Pronin, and Konstantin Arkadyevich uh, Smirnov, a well-known saboteur. Uh, the these three used to work together until they had a falling out and went their separate ways. Now they can't stand the sight of each other. Such a pity. I've never seen a better team of killers. Okay, I'm ready to reconcile all these mercs and get the old gang back together. Uh, what will I get for this job? Good money and good loot. I always offer fair pay. Okay, okay. I'll see what I can do to bring everyone back together. Good. I know that you, Mila can be found in the Filling Station Fortress, which belongs to the Krasno Militia. Rumor has it that Pronin is working for Paragon and serves at the Border Guard Fortress. I'm not sure about Smirnov. The last time anyone saw him was somewhere near Ultranoye. I'll mark these places on your map if, uh, if any of them are unfamiliar. There we go. You hand over your map and he jots some quick notes on it. There. Pay them a visit. All hope is not yet lost. There's still a chance to get all our good guy all our good old guys back together. I'll try. Or can you answer a couple of urgent questions for me? Ask away. 
you have any idea who's in control of the wasteland? The Krasno Chamber of Commerce may claim to control the wasteland, but that's far from the truth. Who's in charge of the wasteland, then? Krasno de facto controls the shore, Paragon watches over the north, and Dennis Denisovich, aka Dan's Factory Gang, controls the lands in between. Tell me about the Krasno Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce was founded by prominent party members, heads of big enterprise and every other kind of bureaucrat, the bravest and most cunning of their trade. During the post-war chaos, they took over all the cushy spots along the shore. Now they declared themselves to be the successors of the state and the greatest power in the wastes. I have to admit, they did achieve quite a lot. They restored the power plant and founded a TV channel. That is indeed something, but not enough to call them the greatest power. What's their relation to the other groups? The Chamber of Commerce likes to lord it over the other organizations, but don't think for a second that means they're comfortable. Krasno knows full well that peace in the wasteland depends on a complex network of checks and balances. Uh, tell me about Paragon. People are reluctant to talk about it now, but right after the war, the same people now guarding Paragon were nothing but river pirates. They started out robbing merchants who drifted down the river, until it occurred to them to broker an arrangement instead. Now they guard the wasteland's northern border, as well as the big lake near Paragon. Paragon is controlled by merchants and guards. Uh, the former deal with financing and administrative issues, the latter in charge of the military stuff. And what's their relationship to the other groups? For some reason, Paragon doesn't like Dan and his gang, likely because of some fight back when both groups were mere gangsters. They pay lip service to the Chamber of Commerce and call themselves part of the Commonwealth, but in fact they're absolutely autonomous. Uh, even if they do ask for Krasno's opinion on some matters, it's mostly for appearances. Uh, tell me what you know about Dan and his people. Several years back, him and his boys took over the old factory by the river. Next thing you know, they have taken control of all the adjacent territories, including Ultranoye. Now they extort money from the local residents, and protect them too, I guess, when they can. I don't know that much about Dan himself, we never spoken about personal matters, but I know the central area which is under his control is very important strategically, because both Paragon and the Chamber of Commerce had trouble taking it over, and thanks to the right timing, Dan was able to step in and do it himself. And what's the relationship to the other groups? Dan bears some grudge towards Paragon. It's never grown in open confrontation, but they're not averse to playing dirty tricks against each other. His own gang acknowledges the Chamber of Commerce and considers it to be a superior power, but should Krasno weaken, Dan won't miss the chance to play his hand. There's no loyalty between them. Then who controls the East and West? If we're talking about the nearer regions, no one does. There's nothing out there but some scattered gangs, slavers, and drug syndicates, and other wholesome folks like that. There's real tension between those lowlifes and the other local factions. Alright, let's change the subject. Uh, what else do you want to know? Uh, tell me about the different mercenary groups in the Wasteland. <sighs> okay, in these parts there are three. The Steel Shield, the Honey Badgers, and the Wasteland Lawmen. However, I think the name Dubious Crooks could be fairly applied to all of them. Uh, tell me about the Steel Shield. Their base was in the city of Fargate, on the coast of the Black Sea. They used to work as city guards and patrol the suburbs too. Eventually they were officially recognized as the city's army. Some of the mercenaries didn't like it, so they moved over here. Tell me about the Honey Badgers. They used to make their base in the north of here. They're considered real heroes there, for a while at least. The first blow came when they launched an attack on a big raider camp. The Honey Badgers won, but took heavy losses. Then they made another mistake getting involved in a dispute between the local princes, and their popularity among the locals plummeted. They disbanded after that, but the surviving members moved down here. They teamed up again, but they'll never be able to reclaim their former glory. Tell me about the Wasteland Lawmen. Supposedly the Wasteland Lawmen, against desperate odds, once defied the cattle-thieving bands to the west, and not just defied them, but even got the upper hand. This earned the mercs a big fat price on their head, paid for by corrupt local officials with their own sideline and cattle rustling. The lawmen end up fleeing here to our, uh, to our prairies. Then again, it's also been claimed the lawmen were taking revenge for a disagreement between them and the cattle thieves, and that they were nothing but sons of guns themselves. In that version, the contract on their lives is richly de deserved. I don't know what the truth is, but I personally think the second story is more plausible. And what group do you belong to? The man grins and runs his fingers through his gray hair. None. I'm all by myself. 
But the local bosses know to come to me if they have a really tough job, because I always find the best people. I keep my word, and I never sell my commissioners. I see. Uh, tell me a bit about yourself. You can call me the strategist. Let me make one thing clear from the beginning. I'm not interested in discussing personal business. No offense, but I have no time for, nor interest in, small talk. Perhaps you feel the same. I see. Have you heard any rumors re uh, recently? I heard a big squadron of Adam personnel was seen near an old bunker to the north of here. But that's all I know about it. Alright, uh, pity. Okay, let's talk about something else. Something else. The man smooths down his silver, gr silver hair, glances over the map in front of him, and slowly nods. How long until the track attack on Ultra Noye? I can't give you an exact answer, but so far the slave owners have been busy feuding amongst themselves. Perhaps they're arguing about who will lead the attack. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna call... <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of reading. I'm gonna call the episode here. In the next one, we'll talk to this guy. My throat's giving out on me. Oh no. <clears throat> one more. Okay. <sighs> the next episode, we'll try and finish talking to the denizens of the suburbs. Oh man. Okay, that's better. I had to take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> that was. Whew. Did a lot of talking lately, so my throat's struggling. Next episode, we'll talk to this guy. We'll try and finish talking to the rest of the denizens of the suburbs, knock out the rest of the quests here. Uh, there are a couple of quests. And then we'll probably take the underground route in to Krasno through here. And we'll try and get the quest for our next companion. We won't spend too much time in Krasno talking to the people yet. Again, I just want to get that one quest and then leave so I can try and get more companions. Because I have to get that companion in order to get the next companion. They're connected, kind of, through, the, through a similar quest. But anyway, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.